Hey, YouTube, it's John again. I'm here uh, uh, just a few feet from a flooded Merrimack River across from a uh, golf course, and uh, kind of a pretty little scene here to start a video. Um, and i got a little subject I wanted to talk about, something I thought would be interesting. So we're going to take off here. We've got the bike warmed up. I've been riding for a little bit today. So we'll get it fired up, and we'll take off here. Let's just wait for traffic. Isn't that exciting? So what I wanted to talk about was a feature that is on my current bike but isn't on my former bike that is generally well-liked and generally appreciated but can be controversial in some circles. And that feature is what's probably on your car, and that's anti-lock brakes or ABS. Anti-lock brakes um, are on most cars built in the last few years and have been around for decades. And, in fact, they've been on motorcycles for a long time, too. But they're only now, in the last couple of years, starting to become more common than and even now, generally, you only find it on higher-end sport bikes and on touring bikes. But the manufacturers are beginning to introduce this as a feature for new bi for riders, uh, sorry, bikes that are generally ridden by new riders. For example, the Kawasaki Ninja 300 or the Honda Shadow 750 or the Vulcan S. These have ABS options. That means that um, these bikes that are intended, the manufacturers intend them, the marketing intends them for brand new riders are coming with analog brakes. It's no longer just uh, high-end sport bikes and big touring bikes like this one. And that's creating some conversation. I'm, I'm hearing a few things. I'm hearing, for example, oh, everyone should start out on a bike without ABS. They need to know what it's like to lock up brakes, or they need to learn to respect their brakes and not rely on an ABS system because they can fail. I think that's an interesting point, and I've heard that. And I've also heard the point of, I don't want ABS, and the reason I don't want ABS is because it's a computerized system that could fail, and, and I just don't want a computer controlling my bike. I want to be in total control of my bike. Now, I'll go ahead and tell you guys right now that I'm a fan of ABS. Uh, I want it on my bike. Give me just a second. got to fix my sunglasses here. I want it on my bike, and in fact, if my old bike had it as an option, I would have gotten it on that too, and and I really wanted a bike with ABS for my wife. We just couldn't find one that fit. Although 2015 and up, the Honda Shadow uh, has ABS. But uh, there's a lot of folks out there who don't like ABS. So I want to address that real quick and just talk about it a little bit. And, uh, and I'll tell you what I think, and I, I'm interested to hear what you think in the comments below. So the way ABS works is that there's some sort of a wheel speed sensor on, on uh, each wheel of an ABS system. Uh, if you watch the overview of this bike, I pointed that out in the very beginning of the video. And that wheel speed sensor knows exactly how fast the wheel is spinning. And it goes back to a computer. And when you apply the brakes, it can tell if you lock one of the brakes up. And it won't allow you to do that. It can tell before you lock it up. It will automatically relieve a small amount of brake pressure to that brake and prevent it from locking up. You'll feel it actually in the controls. You'll feel a little bit of pulsing or what feels like vibration, either on your car or in the bike, on either the rear brake pedal or the front brake hand grip. You're going to feel a little bit of pulsing or vibration. You're going to feel something that tells you that the ABS is working. On ABS bikes, you'll also have a light on the dash uh, that says ABS. And uh, on my bike and on some others, it stays on when the bike is first started up and goes off once the bike has been moving. The reason it wasn't on being in this video, at least I don't think it was, would be because I didn't shut the bike all the way off. I just shut the engine off. So the ABS system was already primed, if you will. It was already booted up and up and running. But once you get rolling and those speed sensors kick in the gear, then, uh, then the bike knows, uh, then the bike's ABS system comes online. I'm in too high of a gear. I'm, I'm still a little used to my uh, 900, which you would have shifted to top gear like now. But here on this bike, you don't use top gear except the interstate. Anyway, so ABS, the big allure to that is that with no locking up brakes, it makes it more difficult to have a low side collision and you stop faster. The first thing we need to talk about if we're going to talk about ABS is we need to quell a very bad rumor. And that very bad rumor is that a locked up tire will stop you faster. Or even worse, that laying the bike down, sliding it, is going to stop you faster. It will not. Laying down the bike is a bad thing 100% of the time. Unless you've got some fear of being decapitated, uh, you're better off to brake than you are uh, to slide the bike. And, and I, I'm, I'm just going to tell you right now, there is no situation where you need to be laying the bike down. And in fact, I don't believe it really happens. I believe that people hit the brakes too hard, especially the rear brake. They lock it up. They low side, which is where the bike slides out. And then in order to kind of save their pride, they stand up and say, well, I had to lay it down to avoid a collision. 
but it doesn't work like that. Sliding on the plastic and chrome and metal bits, the bike is going to stop slower than rubber. And rubber locked up actually is going to stop slower. This is just basic physics. Talk to your physics teacher or your favorite physicist. The rubber in the tires, when it's still rolling across the surface of the road while being applied with the brakes, is where it's going to have the most friction, the most force against the bike. When it locks up, it loses some of that friction. It sounds counterintuitive, but it's true. Hard braking without locking up is the fastest way to stop the bike. The difference between riding the brakes all the way into a collision, like say a car that's pulled out in front of you, and laying it down, could be 10 or 20 miles an hour, meaning you hit the car at 10 or slide into it at 30. I'll hit it at 10 every day of the week. You might not even come off the bike. Uh, it'll have some damage and you'll have some choice words for the driver of the car and so will I, but, uh, <clears throat> but you're probably going to be okay and even if you're not, you did the best you could. And The fact is, braking is the appropriate response when you're talking about slowing the bike down to avoid some sort of an injury or collision not locking it up or laying it down. So, we need to quell that first. So, the argument that ABS is bad because you can stop faster with locked up brakes is simply wrong. Now, the other arguments, those are a little bit more interesting. Those arguments are arguments that we can talk about that, that are a little different, that maybe have some merit to them. So, the first one is that for a new rider, you should start out on a bike without ABS so you get used to fearing your brakes, or maybe not fearing, respecting your brakes. That one makes a lot of sense to me. I don't know that I agree with it, but it makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, the idea there is that you as a new rider, whoever you may be, need to develop a healthy respect for your brakes, an understanding that they could lock up and cause a crash. And so you need to learn to have that feel for where the brakes are just before they lock up. Now, the only wrench I'll throw into that oatmeal is, uh, well, uh, to start off, <coughs> Excuse me. To start off, there's still a feel that happens with analog brakes, and that's that vibration that comes when you brake hard. No, I'm not going to do it because, uh, you know, I could demonstrate hard braking, but I just don't want to. <laughs> and I don't. I do practice it once in a while, but I'm I'm not a big fan of uh, doing it when you don't need to. So you are going to feel that vibration, that pulsing that comes off of the uh, brake control, whichever one you're using, or or both. You're going to feel it. You're going to realize that, in fact you have gone beyond. You have pushed it beyond its limits. And now the ABS system is is kicking in for you and is saying, hold on, hold on a second. You're you're about to make a mistake. You're about to you're about to get hurt. <clears throat> let me step in here and let me let me slow things down a bit. So <clears throat> excuse me. Man, more washed out driveways. So the ABS system for a new rider, it makes sense. I, if you want to make that argument to me, I'm not going to argue with you, and I'm going to say, okay, that makes sense. I understand why you would feel that a new rider ought to ride without ABS. But the thing is, the statistics are out there that ABS is really effective at preventing accidents. Thanks, buddy. Whoa. ABS is really effective at pre preventing accidents. It's really effective at keeping folks from getting into a collision. It helps them brake harder, stop sooner, and prevents them from low siding when locking up the tires. So I think that applies for new riders too. So I would suggest to a new rider who asked me, John, should I get ABS on my first bike? I would say yes. In fact, I would say seek out a bike with ABS. That's hard to do if you're looking used, but if you're going out to buy a brand new bike as your first bike, uh, look at something with ABS like a Vulcan S or a Honda Shadow 750 ABS or if you're on the sport bike side, maybe like a Ninja 300 ABS or something like that. Seek it out. Find some analog brake systems for your bike because I believe it'll help you. And I believe that you'll recognize still and you'll learn how to effectively use your brakes. But take the MSF course. You need to do that anyway. You really should. Uh, and they're going to put you on bikes without ABS. The other argument is, I want control of my bike. I don't want a computer stepping in for me. Again, that's an argument I can, I can understand. I won't say I agree with it, but, but it's an argument I can understand. It's an argument that I have a hard time arguing with. You know, when you say that analog brakes make you stop slower, that one I can say, uh, no, that's wrong. Analog brakes are an extra system that could fail. Okay, okay, we're there. Now, if it fails, the only risk there is that you've come to rely on it too much, and that is a problem. You shouldn't rely on something like ABS. It should be there just in case. It should be a backup. It shouldn't be something you rely on. But it can fail. Now, the thing about ABS is it's still a mechanical braking system. I still have a hydraulic fluid reservoir that has a hose that goes to my brake calipers that when I pull this, it pushes hydraulic pressure through the fluid onto those brake calipers, and it helps me stop the bike. 
that's still there whether or not ABS works. ABS kicks in. It's a, it's a passive system. It kicks in when it needs to. If it fails, it, won't, it simply won't do anything. The brakes will continue to work as they would. If ABS fails, they'll lock up. So the risk is that you've become too dependent on ABS. That's understandable. That's a, that's, a, that's a good argument. Yeah, don't become too dependent on ABS. But it won't stop your brakes from working. You won't be going down the highway pulling on the brake and nothing's happening because your ABS has failed. Brakes can fail. Um, you know, things can happen. You can lose a hydraulic hose. That's one of the reasons uh, our brakes are separate. But brakes can fail. ABS can fail, but it's probably not going to hurt you. It's probably going to be okay. It's probably just going to be something that's going to bring a light on your dash. You should take it to the dealer and get it looked at. It might be an expensive repair. You might decide not to get it repaired, but guess what? You're, you're back at square one with a bike without ABS. Nothing else is wrong. You can ride it. But it's probably not going to fail. It's probably going to last for a very long time, and it's probably going to work extraordinarily well and be reliable. These systems work. They've been around for a long time, even though they're new to motorcycles, and they work. So the argument that I have this extra system that doesn't put me in complete control, I, I think, is a misunderstanding of what complete control means. I don't have a control up here that lets me adjust uh, my air fuel mapping. I, I let a computer do that. I, I don't... I didn't engineer my brake pads. I let an engineer do that. <clears throat> There's a lot of ways I'm not in complete control of every aspect of my motorcycle. But I am in control of riding and operating the motorcycle, and that's true with ABS or without ABS. Simply put, I think ABS works, and I don't think you have to worry about not having control. So that's what I think. I want to know what you think in the comments below. And uh, as long as your argument isn't that uh, ABS will make you stop slower, because that's just not true, and, and it's simply not backed up by anything, um, then I, I'm with you, you know. I, I would say maybe, maybe, and this is a big maybe, an extraordinarily experienced, extraordinarily proficient rider could maybe stop a bike faster without ABS. But even that I would have a hard time believing. So, one bonus point, though. What about links braking systems like this bike has? This bike doesn't just have ABS. This bike has the Kawasaki K-Ax ABS system. In fact, most motorcycles with ABS have some sort of a system similar to this. And it's a linked braking system. When you hit one brake, you hit both. Now, it does allow you to select the bias. If I grab just the front brake, I'm getting mostly front brake and a little bit of rear. If I, if I hit just the rear brake, I'm getting mostly rear brake and a little bit of front. <clears throat> but at low speeds, so don't worry about that. If you're in a parking lot or something, it's still an independent braking system. But at speed, at higher speeds, the linked braking system is going to use those ABS actuators to apply a little bit of extra brake. Again, this is a feature I like. I'm a fan of. I think it's cool. Uh, and the reason I like this feature, by the way, we're coming up to my elementary school that I went to. Um, I am from rural Missouri. As you can see, this is not downtown anything. All kinds of junk cars in the yards and barns, and this little school of 500 people from K through 8, at least it was when, uh, when I was there. They've actually added on to it since then. But uh, yeah, well, there you go. You learned something about me today, my little bitty elementary school. So anyway, the link braking system, I think, is an, another, another fail-safe, another passive safety feature. If I slam on the brakes because this school bus cuts me off, and I just instinctively grab the front brake, and I don't even touch the rear brake, which happens. I, I practice differently. I know better. I could tell you on a test, on a piece of paper, better. But things happen when adrenaline kicks in and our brains turn to mush, okay? So let's say I do that. I like that I have a passive system that's going to say, hold on, he's being an idiot. Let me hit the rear brake real quick so he doesn't die. I like that. That's a cool thing. It's not going to fail the other way. It's not going to automatically hit the brakes for me when I don't want them to. It's simply a passive system that once I apply one brake, it automatically applies a portion of the other in a hard stop or in any stop, really. If I grab a little bit of brake, you can't see it in the video, but I can feel it just from my own experience riding a motorcycle. I can feel the back end settling down like it's applying light rear brake. If I hit the rear brake, I can feel the front grab, and I have a lot more rear braking power than I normally would thanks to the front grab. If I hit both, I stop even harder with the same amount of pressure that I used independently on each brake. Let me downshift here. By the way, if you're going to you know, stop in the middle of the road or slow down, check your mirrors, as I did, to make sure that nobody's behind you. So, link braking, again, something I like, but I can understand the argument against it, especially, especially because it can't be disabled. ABS and link braking system on this Vaquero cannot be disabled. On some bikes it can, especially sport bikes, you can disable the various electronic systems, but on this bike you cannot, and there are no separate modes, it's one mode, um, it's totally passive, there, there's nothing you do, you just ride the bike, it's totally automatic, totally passive. So what do you think? I want to hear your thoughts in the comments below. What do you think about ABS for new riders? What do you think about ABS for experienced riders? 
do you think ABS is necessary when you don't ride in bad weather or, or in harsh conditions? Do you think ABS is essential when you do? Uh, maybe, what do you think about link braking systems? Are they a good idea or are they a bad idea? You've heard my opinion, but I want to hear yours. So leave me a comment below, and, uh, and I'll talk to you later, guys. All right. Bye-bye. Yeah, God bless.